if you search for price increase justification or how to raise your prices or how to justify a price raise or price rise without losing customers anything like that you will find that there is a ton of it on google as you can see price increase justification google finds nearly 47 million results uh, now i confess i have not checked all of those <laughs> but the point is a lot of people want to raise their prices and the truth is a lot of people are afraid of doing it and that's understandable uh, because obviously if you do it badly um, then you can lose business so what's the right way and the wrong way to do it well I don't have a definitive answer on that I I'm, I'm gonna say that uh, before you before I say something and you say well I tried what you said and I lost business and it didn't work so I am not going to give you a definitive answer on that but I can tell you why people don't do it and it's not just because they're afraid that they'll lose business they are afraid of that and there are plenty of case studies online for example just doing this search I found an article in Forbes magazine that's very informative uh, I found uh, well, quite a number of these actually are um, really very helpful and other searches that I did as well um, so and you can look there are case studies about Netflix when they did it wrong and when they did it right um, when they did it wrong they lost about 800,000 subscribers so um, <laughs> you want to you want to check up on that one but but for most of us you know the those of us who are not big corporations or uh, companies like Netflix I'm talking about us solopreneurs or the people with um, you know small to medium sized enterprises online when we want to raise our prices as coaches and consultants and people providing some kind of service the biggest fear that comes up is not but I might lose business it's who me I'm not credible enough I don't have enough authority and that is a big big mistake if you're doing that you're looking at the whole issue from like through the wrong end of the telescope right because if you consider look let me just come up here on the screen for you a second I think I can do that let me pause so put yourself in the customers shoes when you're a customer it's very unlikely that you will go around looking to see who's selling to you to see if you think they are are credible enough or if they ha if they've been around for enough years now in some cases you might if you're going to have brain surgery or something you might want to check the credentials of the surgeon i understand that but in most regular cases what you're doing what we're all doing is just looking to see does this offer solve my problem irrespective of whether it's who's who's behind it now you might then if it's expensive or something you might do a bit of due diligence but by then you pretty much unless you find something wrong you're pretty much sold now flip that over and and when we become the vendor or the supplier of the service we suddenly become all paranoid and think that oh well the people out there um they, they don't know who i am i'm not famous i mean for years i'll tell you my own uh hang up about this because uh, about 20 years ago i went and as a participant and i did tony robbins uh it was called mastery university i don't know if he still calls it that um it took a, a year it was a cycle of uh events to do um uh, including going to hawaii which was an amazing and very expensive but it was a wonderful experience um uh, and um and life-changing and so for a long time afterwards i wanted to be uh in that world and i you know the personal development world and i just kept thinking but how can who's going to listen to me i'm not tony robbins um and it wasn't that i was trying to be him I was wanting to do my own variations and versions of 
of what I understood. I wanted to do my own stuff, using, of course, a lot of what I'd learned from him, like you do from any good teacher. But, but I, I just kept blocking myself with the idea of, but I'm not him. Why would anybody buy from me? And so what it was, I undercut myself financially, massively thinking, well, he's worth this amount with all those zeros on the ends of his prices. And I'm just a kind of a nobody. So I better price myself at this kind of a level. It's madness because it's not about the customers aren't doing that. The customers aren't thinking, well, he's not Tony Robbins. So I, why would I pay him now? I still don't charge Tony Robbins sized prices. Um, and maybe I, maybe I could, <laughs> um, but I don't. Um, but here's the thing. When you want to charge, when you want to work out your prices, here's where, where people get stuck, particularly coaches and consultants. I see this again and again uh, as, a, as a success coach myself and a business coach. I see it again and again. They go, well, you know, and they do what I've just done. Well, I'm not really worth that. And, and I've looked at the market and it's uh, people are only charging this. And, and I go, forget all of that. Because what you need to know is how much do you need to live on? And how much time do you have? How many clients can you see in a month? So let's just say, for the sake of argument, that you need to take home 5,000 a month, pounds, dollars, whatever, euros, I don't care, right? 5,000 a month. And you say, well, I, you know, I'm charging um, 50 an hour. Well, then you're going to need to work 100 hours every month to pull in your 5,000 right? 100 times 50. Well, you might be able to do that. There are 100 hours available in a month, but whether you're going to get enough clients, because how, how many hours a month is a typical client going to pay you for? Let's say four. Let's say you have a, a client for one session a week for an hour a week, or maybe two sessions a, a, a month for two hours at a time, four hours. It's about the maximum any client's going to show up for. Okay, so that's 200 pounds Per client so you need five to make a thousand you need 25 clients five fives yeah 25 clients now I don't know about you but to have 25 clients in a coaching practice a single person coaching practice at any one time is an exceedingly high number and you'd need to keep you'd need to sustain that 25 throughout the year that would be your baseline to pull in your 5,000. The reality is you're probably going to have, let's say, three to five clients at any one time. Let's average it at four. Well, four makes it a bit awkward for the maths. But you can see immediately that to, to pull in your 5,000 a month, you're going to need to charge roughly 1,000 to 1,200 per client per month, which is not outrageous. But what people do instead of working out, oh, that's instead of working out that's what they need to live on, they get all scared and say, what am I worth? Right. So that's the equation that you should be doing. Forget what the market's doing. You are worth something and there is a finite amount of your energy, your time and the amount you can promote and, and so on and so forth. And you also need not just to pay your bills, but you need a life out of it. OK, so, yes, there are strategies and you should certainly study them if you're going to raise your prices, especially if you're only charging 50 an hour by at the moment and you and you want or 50 a session and you want to start charging like three or four hundred a session to make you twelve hundred a month. Right. That's a big jump, obviously. So you need to justify it and you justify it. By telling people the truth, by saying, hey, I'm going full time on this and I need to live. So, and actually, you know, the only way I can do that is to, to raise my prices by this much, and that'll be happening from such and such a date. And I'm worth it. You basically tell them I'm worth it. Now, that does take some courage, and, it, and, and there is definitely a case for if you've got people that you've got on an on a ongoing basis for maybe keeping them on the on the structure that they're on the price structure that they're on because i can see that 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 would that would cause some 
some upset if you suddenly <laughs> made the kind of leap I'm talking about. I mean, it's, it's adding quite a lot of zeros to, uh, to their bill. But you let them know that that's what's happening, and when the contract comes to an end, you're moving on to a whole different level, and you're happy to, to coach them right now at the new level for the price they're paying, but once that contract comes to an end, there would be a period of renegotiating. Um, so, now, I know that in a 10-minute video, this is this is a lot to take in, and and the, where you are right now is probably going to be something like, yeah, sounds great, but hey. So what you need is a strategy for how to establish your authority in whatever market or niche you're in very quickly. You're not going to be Tony Robbins. I guarantee that because there is only one Tony Robbins and he's already taken that slot. So whatever you're doing, uh, and you're not going to be, you know, the next Oprah or anything else either, because she's got that slot, right? You, but being yourself is actually enough. Now, in the description, if you're watching this on YouTube, um, below this video, or if you're watching it on my blog or some other page, there'll be a link uh, below the video, wherever you are, there'll be a link um, directly below. And if you click that, um, you'll find... Uh, a two and a half minute video that introduces you to a program I've got called Justifiably Triple Your Fees. It will save you years and it will stop you blocking your price increases with fear. Because that's what is happening for far too many people. And they rationalize it. So yes, but I really can't do it because of this, this and this. Is your business a business or a hobby? Because if it's a hobby, you probably spend money on it and you don't care if it brings you in income or not. Because that's what we do with hobbies. I play guitar. I buy music books. I buy music apps. I go to music clubs and I pay to get in. Uh, I actually pay, not very much, but I pay uh, to sing sometimes um, because it's a nice environment. That's my hobby, right? Guitar strings and so on. But a business is the other way. A business has to make you money. And if it's not making you money and you're treating it as a hobby or even a, treating yourself as an amateur, then it's time to stop. So click the link below. Check out Justifiably Triple Your Fees. It will save you years and years and years of struggling to try and establish yourself when you don't need to. You can do that in about 90 minutes, as I'll show you inside the program. And it will also has the potential to make you a great deal of money because you will feel comfortable when you need to about raising your, your prices. So go check it out. Um, if that's something you're looking to do, check it out. It's it's not very expensive right now. Uh, obviously, I don't know when you're watching this, um, but uh, uh, I'm sure that, I hope anyway, you'll, you'll find it a good investment. So thanks very much for watching and uh, see you soon.